Hey everyone, before we get into this episode here, I just wanted to uh, give a qu- two quick announcements uh, that aren't in- included in today's uh, episode. The first one is there was a message on your 2024 Schoology page about the t-shirt fundraiser that ends on December 23rd. So it's the class of 2024 t-shirts. You can buy those on the uh, on your Schoology page in class of 2024. Um, and that's due by December 23rd. So make sure you get that done before the holidays if you want a shirt. And the second one is to offer a uh, sincere uh, apology to a student that was included in the um, Attitude of Gratitude episode. Uh, I read the name wrong off of the uh, the post. The, pers- the student's name is Gianni Del Rio, not Gianna. So it's Gianni Del Rio, um, and, he, and he is a guy, not a girl, as I identified him because I thought it said Gianna. So sorry to Gianni. I told him I'd give him a shout out here at the beginning of this episode. So wanted to make sure I did that and uh, made sure that he uh, heard that. So thanks a lot. And on to the episode. All right, everyone. So welcome to uh, this week's episode of the Ninth Grade Experience podcast. Uh, we took a week off last week after Thanksgiving. I guess we ate too much turkey, but we're back at it this week um, with two of our, uh, we called them in the last time we had them on our OG guests here. Um, this might be their fifth or sixth appearance on the podcast here, whether they're on together or uh, talking about other initiatives or talking about our wellness we- or our Thanksgiving um, attitude of gratitude or other things like that. So uh, big thanks to Mrs. Demchak and Mr. McInerney for joining us today to kind of give the, the basically the rundown of how the year's been going and where our freshman class is looking towards here as we come into the holiday season. So thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks, thanks for having us. So yeah. yeah, it was funny. I was looking through and I, I feel like we always talk and we do because we're always in meetings, but I thought we had talked earlier this year for the podcast and it never came together. So it's kind of, it's kind of odd that we're you know, it took us till December to get talking here, but um, I think this is a good spot if, since we've had three months of, of our schooling year so far is kind of just from a counseling perspective, what are some of the challenges or the things that you've seen that have really impacted our freshmen here at the beginning of the school year? We've only been in school in the in-school version for about two weeks out of the fifth, like 20 almost that we've had. So what are some of the challenges that you've seen so far um, kind of as our freshmen have transitioned from middle school to high school so far this year? Um, You know, it's interesting that you bring this up because I had um, uh, an IEP meeting earlier today and kind of talked about this. Um, You know, it's, it's just, it's a difficult spot for everyone. And I do really feel uh, for our ninth graders, because not only are they trying to adjust to like all the changes that high school in general brings, but now they also have to, um, you know, try to adjust to all of these changes that this pandemic has brought. And so it's almost like a double whammy, mm-hmm. um, you know, for our ninth graders. And so um, I'm happy to be here today and, and you know, kind of give them a recap of like where we are and, and like where, where we're going, um, you know, as far as this school year goes. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I know everyone just keeps talking about the pandemic and, you know, the dreaded words of new normal. But um, (laughs) as we all know, students come to the high school, there's less handholding. Work expectations have dramatically increased for freshmen and they're doing it from home without, you know, face to face support with teachers. So, um, you know, take that and all the other stressors that this pandemic has put on everyone. Uh, It's been quite a challenge. And we've been in lots of meetings this year where we've talked about those things. And maybe at the end here, we'll give a couple tips or strategies on things that, you know, our students or parents can look to help to do to kind of ease that in and kind of, you know, remember here that we're, we're not through yet. We got a lot more still to go and that we, you know, can still work on these skills that hopefully will translate and carry on for the next couple of years, not just for the next couple of months as well too. So Mrs. Demchek, you talked about wanting to give a recap of where we are. So we talked beforehand and, you know, the year feels like it's flown by so quickly, but even though we've been at home, it's like we've been through so much already. So I think you wanted to just give like a brief rundown and kind of like almost a summary of where we are like up to today. We're recording today on this Tuesday, December 8th. So that's kind of where we're looking right now, um, basically where we've been and where we're going. So uh, I know you had that kind of lined up. So why don't you take us through a little bit of a rundown of where we've been and kind of get us to where we are right now. Sure. Um, First, I'd like to say hi, and I hope you all are doing well and that you had a a healthy and enjoyable Thanksgiving break. You know, as we round the corner, um, you know, towards the end of 2020, uh, definitely want to go over a couple things with everyone. 
first and foremost, you should have seen your report card. Uh, marking period one ended early in November, and we are now about halfway through marking period two. And here's something that might be surprising. That means that we are almost three quarters of the way through your semester one classes. Um, some of you still haven't figured that out yet. Remember, we are on a semester block schedule. And so your current classes are going to end on January 26th. Um, we are not having midterms or finals. I'm sure you are aware of that, but just a reminder in, in case you weren't sure. Um, and we're sitting right now at about a week and a half to the holiday break. And then when we return on January 4th, there will be approximately three weeks remaining in your courses. So uh, when you think about it, that is not a lot of time. On January 27th, you will start new courses and those will continue to be the courses that you'll take until the end of the school year, which I believe right now is slated for June 14th. Um, the biggest thing I think I would just want to um, say to the students is that um, it's really, um, it is critical to have some type of a schedule or a system um, for school. Okay, I know that you're at home and I know you don't have like the bells like we would here to kind of get you from period to period or start your day and, and signal the end of the day. Um, but we are still really expecting you to be in class from 723 until 230. I know that block four ends at 115, uh, but that is, that is not the time to just kind of close your Chromebook and say, hey, I'm done with school today. Um, it, it's very different and it's very challenging, but teachers are available. Please reach out, email us. Um, we're here to help. Um, it looks different, right? It's not that pat on the shoulder that you might be used to. It's not your teacher kind of calling you out maybe in the middle of class or maybe walking over to your desk and kind of, you know, giving you a little bit of a nudge. Um, you kind of have to take a more active role. And I know for many of you, that is very, very, very new. Um, so please reach out to us. We have been, um, all three of us here actually on the call have been working with students and talking about schedules and, and structure and um, not just academics, right? You know, there are things that are important to you um, in addition to your schoolwork. Those might include exercise or they might include, you know, activities like art or music. And certainly we want you to include those in your day, um, but we just need to make sure that we're, we're keeping that focus on the, the school time. So that's, that's my, my two cents for that question. I don't know if Mr. McInerney would like to add to that. Yeah, just, you know, a couple other pointers here. So under a normal school year, um, Mrs. Demchak and I, you know, we're having orientation face-to-face. -face. Then the first week, um, we are also meeting with the freshmen exclusively, holding another assembly in the auditorium. Uh, we push into classrooms to talk about career readiness and talk about skills um, for success for ninth graders. Um, so we're missing that component. We understand kids are online, but if we haven't said it or you haven't heard it, um, I just think that one thing we always talk about is that when you come to the high school, everything counts. So we have this virtual environment. It's very hard to be motivated uh, to be an independent learner without all those prompts and reminders. Uh, parents are going to work. So you're, it's really up to you to be focused. And we realize that that is difficult, but it's very different from elementary and middle school. When you don't pass a class, you don't earn the credits towards graduation. So, you know, you may have heard it or if you haven't seen it yet, or uh, we need to cover it and provide reminders. You need to pass certain courses, which we consider requirements, and you need to earn 21 credits. So although this may be a struggle, we, we can't urge you enough to take this very, very seriously because if you fail courses, there's no way around it. You will have to take them at some point. You'll have to remediate those failures in summer school, um, you know, or next year or double up. Uh, but as Mrs. Demchek said, like, you need to be focused, you need to develop a schedule, you need to be organized. Um, so we can't emphasize those, um, those skills enough.
As an example, I know we, we've talked about this, you know, not on the podcast, but like, can you give an example or maybe without, you know, mentioning a specific student, like a, somebody that you've seen or talked with or worked with on a strategy that they did come up with that might be something that students that are listening or parents that are listening could like replicate or even just the basic idea of like what they should be doing. Cause I think a lot of times we say like, yeah, make a schedule, do this. And then the kids look at their schedule and it's like, well, I have this you know, and we've talked about this, you know, not specific enough of like, oh, I have math at this time. And then I got nothing. I have a study hall, but I don't have to go to it. And then I have English and then I have this. And then from that 115, you know, there's classes that are done at like 115 and then you don't know what to do next. But like, have you had any experiences with students that, you know, this is what they've done, like whether it's like coming up with that concrete schedule or setting reminders on phones or whatever they've done, like any specific examples we can pass along here. I mean, for me, just, you know, comes right off the top of my head and Mrs. Demchek, you can follow. Um, sometimes students are a little shy to take advantage of those posted office hours the teachers have, 115 to 230. And in working with parents and students, I think if there's any confusion or clarifying points or just how do I get organized or how do I sift through the work in Schoology, when students take advantage of that time, even if it's a brief check-in, I mean, in my experience, I feel like when that connection is made and if students are serious about pushing forward, um, that time is very, very useful. Mm -hmm. And I would say uh, there are a couple strategies. One of them um, is, you know, this approach to formulating a schedule um, really works a lot better when the student is honest um, you know, with regard to A, like what are some of their academic, you know, pitfalls or things that they need to work on? Um, for example, I'll throw out there procrastination. Um, and B, it's really important as you work on that schedule with the student to kind of, you know, kind of refer back to what I mentioned before, that it's not only just the academics. So what I try to do with when I meet with a student in building the schedule is yes, incorporate that time to work specifically on homework and to be very specific, okay? Is it gonna be, you know, three to 3.30 is math and, you know, six to seven is gonna be science. So being specific, but then also building in time for a break, for a nap, um, for, you know, your, your um, practice on your musical instrument, whatever those things are that are important to you. Exercise is a really big thing and that, you know, definitely serves two purposes, right? It's a great stress reliever. We're all under stress right now. Um, and it's, it's just also really good for you, um, you know, as far as your physical fitness. And it, it gives you those, those break times. So I have used strategies with students like setting reminders on their phone, like legitimately like 12 a day <laughs> so that they like, you know, I have some students that, you know, have trouble just getting to the, to the class meetings and then um, making sure that we give them the, um, the times and, and really ask them to play a part. And I, I, I ask them to identify like, what are the other activities that you want in your after school schedule so that they recognize it's not you know i'm not pushing all academics like i want them to have a balance um that's really like a it's a big word it's a word that we pushed out a lot especially when we started the ninth grade academy because we really felt that was important to to get across to ninth graders um you know kind of feeling like a lot of that has been lost, you know, in the, in the world of, of remote learning. Um, so I really, I try to push and direct them, you know, towards that. Yeah. That balance piece is so huge. Like it's, you know, we do have our, our virtual clubs are meeting. Like I, I'm an advisor of two clubs. So I know our clubs are meeting. Um, our athletics are in the process of figuring out if they can meet or not. Like some are meeting, some are not. Um, so it's, it's one, it's confusing because it's like all the things that we normally talk about and, you know, We've talked about even on this show many times about getting yourself involved and getting all those things. It's a little bit more challenging to do that now, but, you know, definitely keep taking a look at like during the advisory announcements for definitely all the clubs are meeting, like they're all just doing it virtually unless, you know, maybe if and when we're back in the building, some of them are going to meet physically because you can't, can't build a robot through, you know, <laughs> through zoom, but there are some that are meeting in person, but it's just so important to kind of keep that balance. And, and we've talked so specifically with students about like, you can't just, you know, go to sleep after your classes are done at nine o'clock and then wake up at three and decide like, oh, now it's time to start working. Like usually 
life gets in the way or maybe you're taking care of younger siblings or you're you have other responsibilities at home so it's it's really hard to kind of you know stay up really late wake up for class roll back to sleep and then keep doing that pattern it just doesn't seem to work out as well as students hoped that it would so yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, we talk all the time about that. And then, you know, if students do want to like set up a time to meet with you about that scheduling, like they can just email either Mrs. Demchek, if you're a, is it a through K, I always forget Correct. the letters, a yep. through K. And then Mr. McInerney is uh, L through the rest of the alphabet. Um, you know, take, you know, take a minute, reach out to them or reach out to one of your teachers to kind of help set that up. Like that is what the one fifteen to two thirty time is for. Like you guys are talking about, like we, it's hard to get students to come back for that time. But I think Mr. McInerney, you're right on the kids that do take advantage of that time. We're seeing them be more successful just because they have that extra time with the teacher that maybe they can't get when they're the 25th person in the zoom class and with one teacher and they can't really get that individualized attention. Right. And remember, that's a great time. Like if you are a student that's maybe a little bit apprehensive about, you know, typing in the chat, like I don't understand how you got that answer. Just, you know, getting that one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, it's, it's totally, totally, um, you know, uh, what's the word, non-intimidating um, because it's just you and the teacher. So that is really, really helpful. And that's something that, you know, for a lot of you, you would not be able to get if we were in a traditional school day because you'd be going from class to class and, um, you know, your schedules might not line up with when the teacher would be available. So um, I'm definitely going to, again, encourage you to, to reach out and take advantage of that. Um, really like five, 10 minutes. It's not, it's, it's not that long. So as crazy as this next part is going to sound, like we're only, you know, into December of your freshman year, but we are already starting the planning for next school year. Um, and that's going to even start next week. So this will be up, you know, by the end of the week here around December 10th or 11th. But starting on December 17th, um, we are going to start the process for scheduling for next year. And it's a new process that you're, you know, not as not the same at the middle school. Um, so we also we also wanted to ask you all to talk a little bit about that process because in the past it used to just be a once and done process but now it's going to be over the span of several months because of the way our schedule is so it's going to start next week and just kind of to give everyone a rundown of what kinds of things they should be thinking about when this scheduling information comes out so i know mrs demchak had a lot about that and then uh, mr mcinerney i'm sure will as well too so so what can you tell us about what's going to start next thursday december 17th on our on scheduling Okay, so um, there are gonna be some similarities with regard to scheduling. And, and the one thing that is going to be similar um, is the way that you will be um, inputting your courses. You as current ninth graders did this uh, last spring and you did it virtually. So um, you definitely have a little bit of, advan of an advantage there. Um, what else is gonna be similar? You will get recommendations from your current teachers. Now remember, we're on that semester block schedule. So here's where the difference comes in. We're actually going to have two periods or two windows of recommendations. The first, as Mr. Stuchko said, is going to start December 17th. The window is from the 17th to the 21st. Okay, your teachers will uh, let you know what day they're gonna be doing the course recommendations um, for the, that particular class. And just like last year, these recommendations are going to be based on like your performance and your work habits and your study habits. Um, and for some of you, that might be, um, you know, something that you are really, really proud of because you're doing really well. And others of you might need to make, you know, some adjustments to that. The process is going to be online. We actually have created a Google form for you to keep track of what's being recommended. Uh, once you submit it, it's going to be uh, recorded for us and it will also be sent back to your school email address so that if you do need to make any edits to it um, between December and then the second round of recommendations that's going to occur in March, you can do that. In March, you will be getting the recommendations from your semester two teachers. Um, and then at the end of March, we are going to uh, send out a verification and we will start building the master schedule in May with the goal of getting all students a list of their scheduled courses not their schedule not their teachers but a list of scheduled courses um, by the end of this school year 
as rising 10th graders, okay, um, the courses that you should be thinking about for next year, okay, everyone needs to take English 10. Uh, most of you will take American Studies 2. Some of you will take a different history course, especially if you had a push this year. Uh, everyone will be taking the next math course in the sequence. Everyone will also be taking a science course. For most of you, it will be biology. But for those of you who have biology this year, um, you will take the next science um, in the sequence. Health Part B. Okay, you did take Health A this year, and you'll take Health Part B as a sophomore. All sophomores will take Aquatics, except for those students who um, attend LCTI. 10th graders also take driver education. Okay, this is like a rules of the road kind of course. And that course is completely online. We started that this year. And then finally, you will take electives, okay, to make sure that you meet the minimum of 5.25 credits that you need each year. Um, electives could be in a variety of different subject areas. Um, certainly could be the next level of a world language if you took a world language this year. It could be in art, it could be in music, journalism, um, tech education, all of those things. Finally, if you are interested in LCTI and you are not attending this year, uh, you will need to fill out an application. More information will be coming about that, but just um, kind of tuck that into uh, the back of your brain there that um, if you're new to LCTI, you do need to complete an application. Mr. McInerney, you want to add anything? About that? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, you, you might have taken him right out of the game there on that one. It was very comprehensive. I don't know <laughs> if I, um, I, I think you covered it all. Um, you know, if anything, compared to even in eighth grade where it was one round and historically when we were in a traditional schedule, it was one round in the spring. Uh, but now that we have a traditional block, we need to get the recommendations of the current teachers and then we'll do that again for the spring. So we capture uh, all teachers on your schedule. So what? Nice. Just um, one thing to think about too, and for this is for our students to take a lot of challenging classes as I think we always talk about um, maybe not necessarily over scheduling yourself. So really realistically thinking about those classes that you really want to take that are important to you um, that will fit into that schedule um, because you know, you might have the intention right now of taking AP everything next year, but that's not going to create a manageable schedule for you um, unless you are deciding not to eat or sleep or do whatever. So I don't know, Mr. McInerney, maybe yeah. I'll ask that question. About, like Maybe being realistic when you're building your schedule to make sure that you kind of build a schedule that is realistic. Well, um, first I'll say, are there students who can handle a maxed out schedule? Absolutely. We, we've seen it, you know, honors AP. Um, as counselors, we always emphasize happy and healthy. So balance is key, not just academics, but as Mrs. Demchek said, outside of the classroom, whether it's exercise, eating right, um, other extracurriculars. But um, sometimes um, I've seen in my experience, you'll have a student that will put down a whole slew of courses. So number one, we recommend typically for all students between six to seven, so six to seven credits. So you have a break in the day. Um, but sometimes I've seen this strategy employed where students will say, I never get what I want anyhow, so I'll write down as many courses as I can. And then if they're that one or 2% where the scheduling gods work in their favor and they get their schedule back and it is jam packed and they may not pay attention to the fact that they are maxed out with no breaks in their day. And then what happens is the deadline to make changes passes. And then that student now has to handle that overloaded schedule. So, um, I think it's a conversation that students need to have with their parents to talk about what their whole day is like, what their weekly schedule is like, if they have outside commitments, extracurriculars, um, and, and let's face it, a break in a day is, is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, we, we don't need anyone burning out in high school. Right. And next year's schedule is going to be um, a little bit different than it is this year. It is going to be a block, uh, but it's going to be an A, B block. Um, so you will only be having four classes on an A day, but then on the B day, you're going to have four different classes. So it's, it's also going to be a little bit of an adjustment um, again next year, um, just due to the nature of the schedule. 
and lots of information will be out. Like I'm sure there'll be stuff from the counseling department, um, even next week, but like on the Wednesday before kind of talking about scheduling or even on that Thursday, but we'll make sure that you will ha you'll have this a week in advance here to kind of take a look through that and think about those kind of different things. And again, if anything, you're, you know, not necessarily like on the first day, like, you know, emailing right away, but like if you're kind of make, trying to make those decisions about, you know, what to take and those kinds of things, you know, make sure you're looking at the program of studies, make sure you're kind of taking a think about realistically like what you're interested in, what you want to do. Um, because if you're, you know, if you want to be a math person, maybe AP English isn't the class for you next year. Maybe eventually you might want to take that. But if you're, you know, you're already in like, you know, AP calculus as a freshman and maybe you're going to keep along that route. Maybe, maybe next year is not the year to try and take, every, you know, all the different stuff. So I think that's great advice there about, you know, happiness and I forget exactly what you said, happiness and health over jam packing your schedule there. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of times kids think that they have to take everything, but in reality, sometimes just kind of giving yourself a little bit of breather is important too. So that's, you know, kind of summarizing there. So we kind of talked about our beginning of the year. We talked about where we're going. So as we kind of finish up here, is there any other, you know, as we head into the holidays, any other things to kind of look at from the counseling end or things, you know, kind of you want to tell students to kind of keep an eye about like as we kind of close down 2020, obviously not the school year, but just kind of going into the holiday season here. I would just say that, you know, for those students who might be struggling, we, we do understand that this is very, very challenging. So um, as educators, uh, we would love for you to be in the building. So by no means are we saying that this is an easy situation. However, um, we talked about the importance of those courses and the importance of passing them for credits and graduation, but also just remember that you were recommended for those courses because your teachers knew that you were completely capable academically and succeeding in those courses. So although um, maybe you wouldn't pull an A in a class because you're in virtual and you find it more challenging, um, you know, you are in those classes for a reason. So do the best you can and, you know, try to finish out the year strong. Awesome. I would agree wholeheartedly. So again, thanks to Mrs. Demchak and Mr. McInerney for joining us here. I'm sure we'll have you back on in the springtime as we kind of get into March mm -hmm. here. You know, the, you always have the open invite here to kind of always come on and, and talk to us about different things that are impacting students, not just in the classroom, but uh, outside as well, too. So we we'll always appreciate having you on. And, you know, there's, like I said, I feel like sometimes you are the, the unofficial second and third co-host of this podcast sometimes for as many times as you've been on. So I appreciate you always being there, answering the emails, ready to come on and kind of give the students a little bit of insight here into what's going on during their freshman year. So thanks a lot and uh, continued good health. Uh, hopefully everyone's doing well on their end. It looks like everyone's at home right now, but maybe we'll see each other in the building next week, uh, socially distanced and far apart, or maybe we won't. So we'll have to see where we are. Okay, thanks so much. All right. Thanks everybody.